Today's podcast is brought to you by WarbyParker.com. Get a free five-day home try-on at www.WarbyParkerTrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Five pairs, five days, 100% free. Until I met my new best friend All of my boys say I'm tripping When they call I'm not answering They always get my voicemail cause I Alex, are we rolling? We are rolling. Welcome to another episode of Sorry I've Been So Busy, the podcast where we talk to busy people about what they're busy with. And recently we've had just a run of very busy people. Occasionally we get a non-busy person. Or formerly busy people. Yeah, enjoying their... their non-busy yes, life. periods. Um, Andrew Goldstein is here. At Andrew Gold on Twitter, A-N-G-E-G-O-L-D. Thank you. My name is Matt Goldich, M-A-T-T-G-O-L-D-I-C-H. I stumbled there on Twitter, at Matt Goldich. And uh, Andrew and I are, uh, just to refresh, set the reset things, we're old uh, camp counselor buddies. And uh, we've known each other for a very and long time. And we were time. former NBC pages together. Started and out in comedy both together. Did stand up, and we've we we've only once worked together on a on a writing project very briefly, uh, where I wrote trivia questions for a Spike uh, TV a, yeah. interstitial game mm-hmm. show. Yeah, back when that was a thing. Shout out to Gil Cologne. And uh, but this is our podcast that we've had now for over a year, over sixty episodes. We're almost at seventy. Week. Yeah, and uh, this has been really fun catching. And it's also been a great chance to catch up with a lot of people that we we know that we don't see very often. And we have a great guest coming up today. Um, that we're very excited. I haven't seen him in a long time, so I'm excited to catch up with him. But before that, uh, we just want to shout out Showbriz Studios at Showbriz Studios on Twitter and ShowbrizStudios.com. We're part of the Showbriz Studios family. Here comes Alex with the uh, the dialogue. The David Feldman Show is one of our uh, brethren Feldo. here at Showbriz Studios. And uh, recent guests include, oh my God, Louis Black, David Tell, Bob Saget, Janine Garofalo, and Gilbert Gottfried. I was going to say putting our guests to shame but we did have janine garofalo so and uh so that's a uh, feldo th- burning through his yeah, rolodex he's, he's got great guests and uh, a lot of a lot of uh, other great podcasts the carson podcast carson podcast just said tom brokaw on tom brokaw today yeah um and uh and of course jess Kirsten has her fat pig podcast here so uh a lot of good a lot of good uh podcasts here so check out uh showbriz studios their their website and thank you to everybody who's been reaching out to us uh leaving itunes reviews we love those those help a lot um and also just with your nice messages and uh andrew do we have a busy body of the week this we week? we do i'm very excited to share okay sorry i've been so busy is going worldwide yes we've like read pitbull yeah <laughs> we've reached Germany. Wow. Matt, we've reached Germany, Deutschland. Here, here I thought we had not, uh, our fans were not outside of Maplewood, New Jersey. But I know. On. We uh, went all the way across the Atlantic to Germany. Marcus Herman, that's two R's, two N's, uh, wrote us on Facebook and said, Hey guys, thanks for putting so much effort into the podcast week by week. Always entertaining, interesting, and also somehow helps my NYC wanderlust. Ha ha ha. Greetings from the home of comedy. Germany. Nice. Thank you. Marcus Herman, our, our German Shout busy Shout out to Marcus Herman. Week. That's amazing. And thank you, Andrew, for your uh, 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 restraint and not doing a German accent, making fun of our, our fan. I would never. I know. Yeah. I would never. Um, so that's awesome. And thank you to everybody who's been reaching out. Um, and uh, also... It, I will say it does remind me of the classic Dana Carvey show sketch, German saying nice things. Yes. Which is like... I because yeah. Because, like, I enjoy your podcast. Yes. There is, like, could have been... No. In, 2000, in 2017, that could have been that, a that uh, been line a, in the sketch. A huge hit, yeah. And also, quick shout-out to Dave Kimowitz, past guest of the show, who texted to let us know he'd been listening uh, to an old, the, an old era episode with Dan Powell, where we had talked about how uh, you could get a lot of free food by... Um, uh, crashing Continental Breakfast, and he said he used to do that back in the day. He he lived across the street from a Holiday Inn Express, and he would, like, once every two weeks just grab a free Continental Breakfast. I've told the story in the podcast before. Yeah. Any film shoots in and around New yeah. York City, walk up, look like you belong there. You could get a nice free go, egg omelet. Go back and listen. Granola to, bars. Go back and listen to the back Swedish cat, fish. Pack catalog. A lot of interesting All kinds of craft service. There. Yes, good stuff. Uh, so, oh, so I, this, this is... This is the part of the podcast where we uh, ask each other what we've been busy with. Matt, 
What's going on? Yeah, so I had an interesting uh, experience uh, yesterday. So um, uh, somewhere around the new, new year, uh, my wife and I, both of us, had a two-year uh, iPhone contract that uh, ended. Mm-hmm. And so I was very excited to get a new iPhone because after two years, you get the upgrade. Yep. And uh, my... I recently got a new phone. Yeah, especially because... So we both had the old 16-gig iPhones that, uh, and that don't have... And then once we had a kid, you start taking so many more pictures. And so you don't have room for all the pictures on your phone. So I was constantly like deleting things from my phone. was running out of room. My wife is doing the same thing. Meanwhile... She uh, did not want to get a new phone. She was like, I want to hold out as long as possible, especially because that's when I went to Apple and I found out that Verizon like ended their deal where like you can just like, trade in for a new phone. And now you just basically have to either buy the whole phone or you pay a monthly fee. So it was like you pay it incrementally. Huge in your scam. Bill. They claim it's better for you and yeah. it's not. So anyway, I'm paying this monthly fee, but I needed the new phone. I got the 32 gig. It's fine. My wife held out for months and months. Meanwhile, her phone is like falling apart her the battery keeps dying like it's like completely like it'll go from like charge like 90 percent to like one percent right. like a second uh it's like running out of room she's deleting i'm like why don't you get a new phone she's like i'm not getting a new phone she's like i don't want to pay for it that you got you know the, the they got rid of the contracts so i'm not paying a monthly fee for a phone i'm just not going to do it like i'm not and i'm like you're gonna have to get a new phone your phone is dying so meanwhile yesterday we woke up and my wife's phone is cracked and she goes, that's weird, I because she did leave it on the ground next to the crib in our kids' room. So I'm like, maybe you stepped on it on the way out of the room. Maybe he stepped on it. Possibly. Yeah, I got up in the middle of the night to get some juice. Maybe he made a call. Yeah. So, uh, and she goes, I don't remember that, but it's possible. So we go to the Apple store, and the guy says to her, um, he takes it out of the case, and he goes, how long has your battery been doing this? And basically, uh, her... And she goes, I don't know. I'd never take it out of the case. Her battery was, like, exploding, like, inside the phone. And that's why yeah. uh, the battery kept dying. And that's also why the phone cracked. And the guy said... And, and she, meanwhile, went to the store hoping... She had this, like, crazy idea where she was going to get a new battery and a new screen for the phone. And I'm like, just buy a new phone. She's like, I'm not buying a new wow. phone. It's a total... She's like, digging yeah. in. And so... The guy says to her, well, because your battery exploded, uh, we can give you an entire new phone for 80 bucks. Yeah. And I was like... But a new phone of, the that, exact, of that generation. She doesn't care. She yeah. doesn't care. No, she figured out the one loophole in the system. Let the battery Which explode. is just wait for the battery to literally explode. That's a fun takeaway for our viewers, our listeners. Yeah, she literally... But you have to put up with months and months of pain. But she figured out literally the only way after they ended well, this. Well, the batteries in the iPhone 6 got recalled. And I'm sure hers did, and yeah, she, we and just ignored just it for exploded. years, and then as, she's the only person now who can still get... But I'm, I just love that, like, I was like, the whole... For months and months, I've been criticizing her, and she she figured out how she a way to game the way. system. She's even Steven. Yeah. And now she... And she has this 16-gig iPhone that, you know, has no room on it, and she's so happy because now her phone, like, holds a battery charge. Yeah, it's she, like, it's all based on what you had before. And she's it's telling like, everybody, I got this for 80 bucks. I know, right? Yeah, exactly. These people that walk around with the cracked screens, I can't... I It is a weird phenomenon for me. Yes. Go ahead, yes. Okay. Sorry, guest. Hi, David Angelo here, everybody. Yes. Um, first, I want to say a few things. Yes. First of all, Verizon's awful. They're a terrible company. But are there good ones? Are there good carriers? No, but they're awful. Right. Um... Apple is awful. They're a terrible company. Yes. The iPhone is a terrible phone. If you've ever had an Android... Yeah. I'm telling you, this it's is just a I'm, better phone. I'm, and, I'm, and you realize... Because the iPhone, like, I can't even... You don't... It doesn't even... It goes through iTunes. It's so stupid. Yeah. Android thing, it's so much easier. It's so much cleaner. It's a better phone. It's a better phone. I'm so glad to have you on. Now, you're, 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 this is like a perfect uh, thing to bring you in on. Because you're a contrarian. But I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. Uh, Android is more popular phone. I agree. It's globally. It, yes. Yes. And because iPhone it's in a America. Better, yeah, but that's because you've been marketed had, to on the fashion yes, thing, no. and it's a terrible. Well, phone. I was going to say, what about the peer pressure? There's so much peer There's pressure. There's zero. Peer, let me explain the difference for you, you who are like, oh, I don't no, know. No, I was. In, I was an Android, and a, I also had a Dell, by the way, until a few years ago, and then I switched on my last Dell? computer. Like, they make phones? No, like I had a Dell computer. Oh, I had a PC. Yeah. And then like about yeah, no. about four years ago, I, I, much later than most people, I switched to... I iPhone started now. with Apple on a computer. But the the 
Apple company is so bad right now. The difference is on your iPhones, do you use Google Maps or Apple Maps? I use Google Maps. That is the, the globally, that is the difference between the two systems. Apple Maps is a iPhone. Mm-hmm. Google Maps is the Android. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows Apple Maps is shit. I noticed that a lot of people, but isn't is it it's possible? It's the same with every other feature. Unless certain areas and certain areas of technology, certain companies have ceded that to other people. Like Google has not developed like a competitor. Everything else is better. Does has Google si- developed a com- competitor to iTunes? iTunes is awful. But has Google? Has so what? How? Yeah. What do you do with music on a on a Android? You just it's there's an app that plays MP3s, right. yeah. and you can put on any MP3s. It doesn't have to be ones you bought on iTunes. I have yeah. all this music yeah. that like you get a song from Amazon, you can't put it on the fucking iPhone. Yeah. How stupid is that? No, I look. I, it's the dumbest phone. Yeah. Everyone, get rid of it. I, I got, just got a new one, and I will say I'm livid over the the headphone jack. Oh, you don't scam. have the headphone jack? No. Whoa! You have they give you an adapter that goes on your headphones that can plug in, but they want to move everybody to wire to wireless. They're headphones. social engineering, and they're awful. At and it. I'm like, how much of a dick move is that to your old customers? Because your old customers, older people, right. customers are not going to use wireless headphones that stick in your ear. They were. I mean, there's a there's a uh, you're an expert in this kind of thing, but there's like a market. Uh, advantage to being the first and they were literally the first people to go from like you can hold 60 mp3s on a device to like 3,000 and so that gave them like a huge advantage in that race it's well they like, weren't but they again they had the best marketing right yeah uber is kind of the same thing where it's not it's it, they're they're the not a great company but they because they were the first to do their thing they sort of the, flooded the zone well uber they lose they lost 700 million dollars in just the read first that. quarter of this year but they're the app that 80% of people use. I know, like, yeah. but if you think they're bad now, imagine if they had to turn a profit. They're they're giving up, they are subsidizing our transportation yeah. by they're paying us basically to use them. They're yeah. losing money. And well, people still complain about it. I mean, they have I complain about it all Can the you time imagine if they yeah, but I mean, they're I I actually I this is the golden age of apps. All those food delivery ones, they're mm-hmm. all competing against each other. Yeah. They're throwing you coupons. There's new ones every free. week. Yeah, so you take advantage of that. It's great. Yeah, it's nice, and also like fuck all these like I'm. Th- th- I'm sorry, can you swear on this? Thing? Yeah, of course. Sorry. I don't mean to we be had, like our last guest. Our last guest was Andy Letterman. Okay, that gives okay. Any indication? Yeah, all right, <laughs> okay. I know very well. We did a show together on E called. Um, oh yeah, I don't even remember what the with, fucking thing was with called. Julian, it was yes. only yeah, four. we have issues. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. It was. right. Um. Anyway, now I forget what I was saying. Can sorry, you, guys. You were, we were going, talking about you were talking about Uber, Uber. and phone, and then food delivery. Uh, apps. Oh yeah, I'm okay. All the greatest minds of this generation working on these apps, but they're all in Silicon Valley. These guys, 180 IQs, all this stuff. We need to get a new thing to, for food delivery. <laughs> food delivery is bar none. We've nailed it. The easiest yeah, thing we, in my yeah. life before the apps. Right before apps existed. Getting d- d- food delivered to my house was the easiest thing it I wasn't ever had a problem. to do. Yeah. It was. It was in itself a convenience. Yeah, and then they're like, "We have to make that. We have to streamline there, this." There is a there is a thing where okay, like I understand, like I don't like phone calls. I don't like talking to people on the phone. I, I prefer to text. But there is a there is a point where you're on your phone and you're on like Grubhub and you're trying to like enter your credit card number. Where you're you're at, at a certain point, you go, "It would have been quicker to call them." Like Not there is yeah, there, there is that sometimes seamless like, yeah. same deal. You yeah. have more confidence in the order. I call up. Hey, how you doing? Right. I need a pad thai, chicken. There's a million people yelling in the background. Yeah, and they're like, okay, okay. And then you have a, you build a relationship with yeah. the, with the place, and then they know that everything is you. You clarify. No, don't do this. Do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And then when you call back, if it doesn't show up, I mean, first of all, it will show up because there's a personal connection. If you're yeah. just a number on a order thing through the fax machine or whatever. The, yeah. The, the, I also I hate those fucking iPads. Everything is now on. I yeah. you go to the yeah. cashier and it's an iPad and they flip it around <laughs> and then they're like, hey, "Oh, what do you want for the tip?" It's like, "Oh, Jesus Christ!" And you yeah. sign with your finger. I don't do it. I'm not the, the fucking the grease of a million peasants <laughs> on that screen, and I'm supposed to touch that. I do. It with I my tell tongue. them no. I say you drag your finger across it. And no tip. I do it with my tongue. I do. I I I mean, I would not tip. 
That I mean, this is like what we get dug, uh, dug down in. I I do not tip for like um, a coffee like barista. You know the all. No. You know um, the this, only thing you should tip for is the fucking delivery yeah, guy. Yeah. This was a huge argument I had years ago. Is do yeah. you tip the when you pick up food? No. 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 no, I agree. The only it's funny people only tip like two or three dollars with the delivery guy, and then at the waitress they give twenty percent. The and fucking delivery, delivery guy is bringing it to your house. Everybody. The waitress yeah. brings it to the table. The, when you let me ask you this: you go to a bar, you order a seltzer, do you tip? No. Well, it depends. Do do Especially the, if they charge me eight dollars for it, which a lot of them do. These these people. It depends criminals. if you're trying to get. If you're trying, it depends if you're trying to build a relationship with the guy. Like if you're going to be there for a while and you want yeah. good service. I don't know. Because like the standard, you get a beer, you leave an extra dollar. There, I feel like right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Also, I hate the food service people. I'm so tired. They they have us. By like, the they boss. walk on water with their their. I should be able to be like I don't like the, this fucking waiter. I don't. I, I you say if you qu- criticize a waiter in today's society, it's like telling a Vietnam vet like, you know, you killed babies or something. <laughs> it's like no, this fucking waitress sucks. Yeah, this bartender sucks. I don't need a tip on everything. I do it when it's appropriate. I, and and I, I don't care. And people come there. Like, you never worked as a waiter. I did. I fucking was a pizza delivery guy. I tried to be a waiter. They would never hire me because they're fucking insider, clicky bullshit assholes. <laughs> So I don't care. I have total animosity towards yeah. them. I hate the service industry. I can't be around if somebody uh, in, uh, questions a waiter. I've become... Uh, we can't go to lunch. My problem lunch. is I've become a big tipper because we, oh, bring our, we bring our kid everywhere, and so yeah. we leave the area like a shit show. You need, and a, tip, so you as, need a tip the surrounding tables. Right. <laughs> the people don't care. The, yeah, the the dollar for you. Care. That's like they a say with a kid, you. you should come on the airplane and give out presents to the people around you. Yes. Right? you buy a drink, you say, look, anyone in my row... Get no, but drink. I mean, I feel like because nor- if you and I went to a restaurant, the there wouldn't be like food under the table like when we left. Whereas with my kid, and so I'm tipping extra based yeah, on right. the idea that they're sharing it with like the guy who's not. Sure, sure, that's my fine. Brother, that's yeah. fine. But I'm saying I don't like when I I don't like being not able to criticize. My brother like will they're... berate a service uh, person. Not a it's uncomfortable, person, but a any kind of person serving you. He'll parade a Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> it, I'm nice to. I start nice. Yeah, I'm all. I'm good, and I and I have a high threshold. Yeah, but I don't like the the idea that they are these sacred cows. Yeah, forget yeah. it. And I, and I hate when people they get yeah. so self righteous about. I used to wait. To, I used to be a server. You know, fuck you. You know, they, <laughs> they make could, a living. That doesn't off mean their, not everyone's an. They asshole. make a living off their tips, David. Good. Is there it's any? Fine. Is there anything? Um, I, I also love, by the way, just a side yeah. thing. Is like when you're in a comedy club and you're like, "Hey, tip your wait staff." Like, yeah, I, I like doing that as a comic because it's like, "Tip your wait staff. Take care of them." I mean, I'm working up here for like you know drink tickets. Yeah, but you guys make sure that they're okay. <laughs> I guess I see the argument where those people get treated like shit so often, and people are so rude. Like when you hear stories about like. You know, like, every waitress must have, or, you know, in a bar must have at some point, like, had her, like, ass grabbed by, like, a drunk guy. And so, like, because, like, you hear so many horror stories about, like, people being assholes to them, you you sort of have this thing of, like, hey, be nice to those people. Like, you know, I... Right. That's See how why Matt I, has to feel like he has to put a disclaimer on me saying this because no, he's no, worried no. he's going to get letters. That's, that, We're that's, not going to get letters. Well, you, you, you just feel, you can feel the uncomfortableness oh, about yeah. saying wait staff aren't they 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 aren't great well, that, look, they that, aren't necessarily by definition great no i never that's said they where were by we're definition. the same yeah that's, but that's why you're apologizing any for what I said. customer service person that's why i uh Aaron, i'm always overly nice because i feel like everybody else treats them like shit. see my whole thing is if a, if i go somewhere and the service is bad i just don't go there again you really stuck it to them. Yeah, I, I don't have that. I don't even have that much of a hang up. But I, I for me, I, look, I'm a twenty percent tipper yeah. guy. I'm a good person. Yeah, just you know, refill the water. And if you don't, like, oh, maybe it's busy. Fine. But uh, look, I was in, uh, I was in some somewhere. I was in upstate. I was, I don't know, Washington State. Yeah. This one guy. It was a whole restaurant. There were like fifteen tables. Yeah. One guy doing the entire thing, yeah. and he was so upbeat. He took care of everyone. He did everything, and he was good at it. And it's like, yeah. This guy's great. I'm going to tip him and everything. These other people, you show up, it's like, yeah, I don't know. They're just, and, and that 
fl- it's really what started this off the flipping the iPad that you did something. <laughs> I used to work at a drugstore, you know. It's yeah. this is just transactional stuff. Yeah. yeah. You're just standing at a register. You yeah. don't get tipped for that. The I flipping agree. of the iPad is is it's, it's so the presumptuous. Act that you, yeah. Um, does the um, we haven't even introduced given David a formal he introduced proper himself. Introduction. I think everyone knows himself. Matt, very who's funny stand up comedian, writer for the Daily Show with Trevor Noah, and uh, got per- really perfect podcast guest because guy who just comes in with and right away with an opinion on everything, which is hot. exactly what you want. David Angelo is here. Thank you welcome, so much. Welcome, Great to guy be everybody. Known forever. Nice to meet you. What's your do you have, do you have any sympathy for flight attendants? Yes. You do? Yes. See, now, at this point, I feel like that would be considered a contrarian view. Is it? I, uh, well, I, I, I am pro-airline. I think Delta Airlines yeah. is the best-run company. Interesting. Can you... Um, I mean, everyone complains about these people. Have, yeah. have you ever tried to complain of the post office? Have you ever tried to... Complain? Yeah. The, the, you can't even get up... You know, this yeah. doesn't exist. The fact that they're so they're so good at it. Yeah. They run this. Try running. Do you have? Have you ever run a company? Have you ever done a logistic? Can mm-hmm. you imagine running Delta Airlines? It's crazy. You have airplanes. You have ticketing. You have all the a uh, magnanimity, yeah. the of what's going mm-hmm. on, and they and they pull it off. And sometimes it's an hour delay, but sometimes it's not even their fault because the airport doesn't have the clear. You know, like the, all this stuff. I can't believe how well it's done. Yeah, I cannot believe how well they yeah. do it. This new thing where people you can tweet. The airline when something gets fucked and up. They and they reply. And they reply and they help you. Yeah, if you have enough followers, if you're, if you're a comedian. Can that, you imagine? I mean, they're the best. That's yeah. the best company. What yeah. about the whole I row and with the uh, guy getting dragged out recently? You know, I mean, whatever. He got a million dollars, $10 million. Yeah, he's good. And also, it's like, you know, at some point, like they say, get off the flight, get off the flight. <laughs> but, but that... <laughs> Uh yeah, but he had a ticket. That guy. So what? They should have kept upping the dollar value until so- he was willing. Someone was willing to take it. Someone said now that it's they, a pricing game from yeah, the price. Someone right. said that they had a legal limit. They couldn't, but maybe that's not true. They owed him the ten million dollars they paid. They probably but could have gotten somebody off the plane. No, for, but for, I, I think it's, it's, there's it, a, it's like yeah. the airline version of the the Seinfeld rental car. I guess bit. so. Um, they should have. Yeah. Uh, Two uh, quick uh, David Angelo stories. One, can you explain why you uh, needed to once take my picture to go to uh, traffic court? Oh yeah, I, I, I took a lot of people's <laughs> photo. You were one of them. To explain, can you tell I got a, a uh, okay. So in Los Angeles, this, this kind of you know, uh, um, what, 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 I don't know how to Los Angeles. It's like it's like East Germany. Type East Berlin, basically, you know. So socialist. Shout out to Marcus Herman. Total, total disaster city. Uh-huh. And the only way that they can pay for anything is through parking tickets, and it's all like the entire city's funded by just harassing you over car stuff. And everyone who lives there knows that. Yeah. So I got a red light ticket, a red light camera ticket. No cop pulled me over. It was the camera took a photo, and um, I just felt like, and it was you know I ran the light. Yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, the statute of limitations is up. I can say that. <laughs> but I was so mad because I had paid all these fines over all these other bullshit things. Like, And I went to court once for jaywalking, which I can talk about later. <laughs> wow. So that's how fucking crazy they are. But with the red light camera thing. So they send you this thing in the mail and they say, it's a photo and it's got, you know, you're in the driver's seat. Here's the car. Here's the license plate. And it says, here's your summons notice to appear to court. First of all, everyone's. I, I, I would say this to people. Like, I got this red light, and everyone was like, "Oh, they don't do those anymore." I don't know if you remember hearing this. This yeah. might be too local specific to Los Angeles no, to go down this path, but yeah. like nobody realized that this was still in effect. So anyway, it was still in effect. And I went to, I, and I'm like, I got to fight this. I'm not paying because it was five hundred dollars. First of all, the ticket was five hundred dollars. Can you imagine? Yeah, that's my a lot. car. I sold that yeah. car a year later for seven hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> so. The the ticket was $500. I'm like, I mean, there's no fucking way I'm paying these assholes. I don't think I knew that. I think I thought this whole story was over like an $80 ticket. No. So now it makes a little more sense, but go on. So so I had to develop a legal strategy because I'm like Matt Locke and Travacord. I'm there all the time. 
I had, I was in court every five months in Los Angeles. You that. were you were uh, law abiding citizen. I com- contributed to the community, and they had me in court every five months. And also, let's be fair, um, not quite as gainfully employed as you are. Like a little more, a little bit more free time on your hands. You Probably. were more freelance gig to freelance gig. Two, Probably, two I might have had a job at that point, but because okay. I, I can't, I remember being like, "Oh no, I have to take time off." But but you're right. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out why you needed Matt's picture, but go on. Continue. Let's see because I'm a, this is my legal genius. I'm excited. So they they basically the way these things work, there's a, they're a scam. The ticketing is a scam because the cop didn't pull you over, so they're just using this photograph, which is which is a blurry photo. It's like security cam. It's from like a hundred meters away, and it's like you can't convict someone of a crime based on that. You need more evidence. But they expect you to come in and basically cop to it, and then that, and then through that, they kind of like manipulate the. They system. match it with your plate. Yeah, but you can't ticket a car. You have to ticket a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I said, "All right, well, you can't identify me as this driver, right? So because you, I'm generic. I'm me is, and uh-huh. I you predicted how, it in my head. We look pretty. Yeah. We we look kind of the same. And this, at that time, we had the same glasses, more or less. And there's another guy, Zach Sherwin, who looks yeah. like us. Mm-hmm. And then there's another Zach guy, Rick Sherwin Glassman, looks, who look more like me. Those they, two more like me. Those two even look more like you than yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're like we're like that so that you, John Ossoff guy too in Georgia. Yeah. If you're like, <laughs> like, there's basically like five guys. Oh uh, no, there's and a I'm lot one more. Of, I'm one type of this guy, yeah. and we uh, all exist. Yeah. Mo Rocca. Yeah, he's one yep. of us. Yeah. <laughs> so I just got all these photos, and I go into the thing, and I, all I had to do because I don't have to perjure myself. I don't say I wasn't driving because that's perjury. I just have to introduce doubt that I'm driving. Yeah. So I bring in a photos of these all these people. I say these are my f- friends and associates who I have or would allow to use my car. And then they threw out the thing. It's a wow. foolproof defense. You Every, can't. Yeah, you can't. And everybody else was coming in. They were, and they were like trigonometry, trying to triangulate like the light <sighs> signal. And stuff. It's like guys, this is uh, you don't it's ever have to pay pay these tickets mm-hmm. ever unless you have a face tattoo or something so crazy. There's no way they can yeah. do it. So I got out of that. You're like the dude, subject of a CBS drama. A dude, I'm telling you, I... They should base it on you. That that case was... They have the Jury Whisperer show? They should have a show about David. I feel like I'm an expert at traffic court. Do people lose there? Cause I, cause they my, lose all the time. They pay my, $500. My feeling was like, oh, you went through the effort to like go and fight it. Like th- That there's like an inclination to let it go, but I guess not. Because I, I, I argued Not a ticket, I mailed back, that, uh, that I uh, and they, uh, re- they um, what do you call it, they got rid of it. And so I was thinking, like, maybe just because I had the thing to, like, no. write a thing, mail it back, and put a stamp on it. No, put Matt, it in the mail. Matt I was arraigned and tried <laughs> for jaywalking. I had <laughs> two we... court appearances, and that was a $200 ticket. Wait, you were tried? I went on trial. You were arrested? I wasn't arrested, but I was, I was, they... Gave me the citation, and then I had to go to court for an arraignment where they read me my charges. Uh-huh. And then I had to go to court again for the trial on jaywalking, and it's... I totally destroyed them too on that one. And they waived it. They didn't waive it. They it was illegal for them to give me the ticket. You, found, you were found not guilty. Yes. Awesome. Or the charges you were, were acquitted. dropped. Acquitted. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> Where'd you jaywalk? On it's Santa Monica and Virgil. Oh, uh huh. Or not Virgil, but just west of there. I've never heard. It's of a anyone. very rough street. It's like a dangerous place. It's yeah. ten o'clock at night. Yeah, I had this was the most ironclad defense ever. So it's it's like a danger, high crime place. Ten o'clock at night, no cars. I'm crossing the street. The fucking cop comes down from the end of the block. He pull, you know, pulls me over. There's now three. I think two cop cars showed up. Four cops for a guy walking. Process this thing across the street. So I'm furious, whatever. I, I go along with it. Then I look up. I look up the crime stats for that intersection. Mm-hmm. So I, I had this whole thing I was going to do where I was going to, I taped them all together. So it was like they would show the incidents and like what the crime was and the reporting. And, and so just for the intersection. And it was huge. It was for like the last nine months with like 400 things. So I printed them all out and I had like 12 pieces of paper and I, and I taped them together so it was like one big scroll, and I was going to do the thing, a big dramatic unfurling in yeah. the courtroom. I'd be like, look at how dangerous this intersection is. You want me standing there at 10 o'clock at night? I'm, I'm fearing yeah. for my safety. And, and then there was one thing on there that it was an armed robbery. Or no, I'm sorry, a burglary. 
at the intersection at that time when the cops were all on me. Wow. So I was like, I mean, I'm going to go in with that. And then I looked up the statute, and I and it was, I didn't, jaywalking is only really a crime between two, if it's a controlled, in, between two controlled intersections. Mm-hmm. So you, you, if you cross against the signal or whatever, but on the street, where on one side it's a controlled intersection, meaning a traffic light or a cop directing traffic, and on the other end of the block, the same thing. And on this block, there was just a stop sign on one side. Wow. So I had that map all done and everything. I'm learning a ton. Yeah. So I went in there and I and I and I uh won that one too and the fucking cop he was so deflated. <laughs> oh, and I hired a um um a courtroom sketch artist. <laughs> so and she ended up doing stuff for the Oscars. She really? was like doing sketches for the Oscar uh, the Oscar coverage. It was weird. But but um and she also did like the Michael Jackson trial and all yeah, that. Yeah, of course, in LA. And uh, so the, the ticket was two hundred dollars, and uh, the sketch artist, which got thrown out, and the sketch artist cost me four hundred dollars. <laughs> oh <my laughs> but it was God. worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it for the look on his face. Um, I I want to. We got to get to your day, but before that, real quick, one other story I want to ask you is: uh, uh, Can you explain why you used to text me pictures of a balloon that was in your apartment? Do you remember this? You remember that uh, I remember you had a part, the balloon. You had a, you had a, I don't remember texting you had a not pictures. Very of. well attended. It was awful. The part. This is a really party. funny story. It's actually it'll, it'll seem sad, but it's pretty funny. You decided to invite people to a party at your apartment twenty four hours before. No, party. it was long. It was more yeah, notice like than that. It was more notice than that. Yeah. But also, it's like oh, get it off a, it, everybody. It, it was who, a, with your you need advance <laughs> notice. But it was a, I'm no, so tired. It was of a that. weird invite. time. It was a weird time for a party. It was like five o'clock on a. Friday or something. I don't remember what it was. It wasn't that yeah. weird. It wasn't that weird. Okay. But it was not like... No, you I know. think the market bears out my claim. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Way. No, but it, no, that was, it was more on me as a person than so it was the timing That's the fair. That's fair. Yeah. I threw this part... I, I was like... I was just like, I, you know, I got to do something. Because no one was inviting me to anything. Yeah. I was just <laughs> sitting around... Every Friday, I'd be sitting around like, what's going on? Nothing's happening. Yeah. I mean, you can, after you've heard me talk for 20 minutes, you can kind of understand. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to have a part. Because I had this great apartment. Do you remember the apartment? Yeah, it was a really great apartment. It was crazy. This, this was like Phil Collins' L.A. apartment. Balcony, yeah. It was crazy. It was re- like super high ceilings, very light, you know. I like yeah. you went Phil Collins. Because it, was, it wasn't it was like, it was contemporary, but it was 80s, you know. Yeah. It was great, though. So anyway, I invite all these people. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to play it safe. I'll, I'll invite like 50 people or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I expect like 15. Yeah. But anyway, it was so funny because like a couple people showed up, but they all staggered. Yeah. So like it was like one person shows up and nobody's there. Rob and I were the first people there. Were yeah. you the first people? And when we left, there was one other person there. <laughs> so was, they show up and then yeah. no one's there. And then I'm like, I don't know. No one's here. And, and then they're like, we got to go. And by the way, it was perfectly pleasant. It was like me, you, and my wife having a drink out on your balcony. It was a very nice evening. It was like a happy hour cocktail. It, it, you know, and then uh, Admiring I remember the who showed up. Lauren Greenberg showed up. Yeah, then she shows yeah. up. And then, but as you're, oh, I guess yeah. you guys left at the we same left, time. We left, and I was like, we have to, maybe Lauren left too. I don't know. I don't know what happened. And then they left. But and then someone else showed up. The, the funny, but then they were, and I was like, they were there just here. <laughs> <laughs> so just intermittently throughout so the night. Throughout people. the night, people would come over and be like, oh man, no one's here. But the funny part was my wife insisted on the way there on buying you a balloon. And she thought it was my birthday. She thought it was your birthday, which I didn't find out until much later. Because l- later, like, it was like after the party that she was like, wait, it wasn't his birthday? And I was like, no. And she goes, oh, because that would have been the saddest birthday party ever. Right. That we were I mean, the only so people sad. there. But, and then this balloon stayed in your apartment for like it, weeks, and you would occasionally it's text funny, me pictures I don't, of it. I don't imagine I did, but I don't remember yeah, that would, part. But yeah, I, yeah and then I would I get had updates. This like, still, you should have had the, still up in the. How do you throw out a balloon? I mean, you should have had the that? court sketch artist draw the balloon. Too expensive. I couldn't afford it. To yeah. Um, let's take a quick ad break for um, Apple has an ad that they <laughs> 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 And then we'll be right back with David Angelo. Hey, for you, the listeners of the Sorry I've Been So Busy podcast, Warby Parker is offering a free five-day home try-on to give you the opportunity to check out their glasses. I was in L.A., um, I would say two years ago, and I was walking on uh, Abbott Kinney. And I popped in the Warby Parker store, 
And I found a great, a fantastic pair of sunglasses I still use today. Sunglasses rarely ever fit me well. I have a very small head. Uh, they fit them to perfection on my face. And the thing I love about Warby Parker, you can walk into any of their stores at any time and they'll readjust your glasses for, um, for no cost. Uh, and, uh, you kind of always can tell when somebody's wearing Warby Parkers. They're very stylish. To get your home trial on today, go to warbyparkertrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Again, that's warbyparkertrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B for your free five-day home try-on. And we're back with David Angelo. We want to get to to David's day, but real quick, you had something. You you mentioned something before we went went on the air that you invented the comedy podcast. How The comedian podcast. The comedian podcast. Yeah. So I, I basically was the first comedian to have a podcast. Wow. When was this? Ten years ago. More than that. And I started out, I did this internet radio and then this other thing with this other guy in Chicago. And then I was like, I'm going to do, I'm going to build this. Because at the time, they didn't really have, it was not, the infrastructure wasn't great for right. this kind of stuff. But I, ha- I set it all up and I had, a, it was a live show, first of all. And I had a phone number people could call and they could call in. But then, so it was kind of like internet radio, which was the buffer thing between mm-hmm. that podcast and radio. And then I would release that as a podcast. And I had good viewers. There used to be this thing, Podcast Alley, which like would rank the things. Yeah. And it was always, the number one thing was always this um, Harry Potter podcast. Uh-huh. It was like, that was the age we lived in at the time. And, uh, you know, I would have comedians come over, but no one knew this what a was podcast was. Yeah. Huh. This is when I was roommates with Thomas Middleditch. Oh, sure. Oh, wow. And we had a little place in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And uh, people would come over, but no one knew what a podcast was. And I couldn't explain, I couldn't impress upon them yeah. that this was the future. How right. do you do it? How yeah. do you listen? Well, they would, and the thing was, and this is kind of like my party story, they would just cancel on me last minute. They'd be like, oh, I got a show at this bar or yeah. whatever. Yeah. With like seven people. And, and then, there was no Twitter or Facebook to promote. No. But I had... How did I do it? I had a website. I had a standalone website. And I had to host the thing also. Because you couldn't just... I don't know how you guys do it where you upload. What you... We don't either. We Alex don't either. does all yeah. the tech stuff. But yeah. none of this... There were, no, there were none of these companies that... This kind of channel. So I did everything. And I had like a, I had the mixer. I had the thing. I, I was pumping in Skype. But also doing it live, so people could call in. And uh, like Bill O'Reilly, I did like a hundred episodes, and it was so hard to get momentum because comedians were just yeah. resistant and would cancel. And then I would, yeah. and then it's really hard. You guys have each other, but when I was by myself, if, I, if someone canceled, yeah, and I have a live show scheduled, it was Tuesdays and Thursdays at like nine p.m., and then no guest shows up, but I have audience yeah because it's li- we're live and yeah. it's scheduled and then i have to do an hour by myself see for me that i'm like you're one of the guys who would have a little bit of not much of a problem just punt, what, for I, an hour I, by right yourself. now i could probably do it but at the time yeah, i would yeah, just be yeah, so sure. mad about the comedians sure. is the podcast I, still available is it still no happen? i took it all off oh yeah i mean i mean i had good guests actually yeah, yeah i believe some it. people who became big stars wow but uh um that's crazy and I, I didn't even know about it i guess that's I know. It was what, really did it have hard. a name? What was the name of the show? It was just the David Angelo You show. were the first person you knew that had a podcast that was a comedian. Yes. Yeah. And I explained it to... I, the New York Half comedy the podcast scene, was they, just him explaining it. Wow. It, honest to God. <laughs> comedians didn't understand. You were, you were probably ahead of your time. You probably needed to be the second podcast. I know. I, re- I, yeah. I needed to... But now I'm like, now I should have a podcast. But now I don't want one anymore. It's... I can't imagine doing it by myself. Uh, having uh, it's like having a writing partner. It's like it motivates you to yeah. keep going. If yeah. one, we, somebody can't book a guest, the other body, the other person books. If somebody a guest, doesn't feel like person. doing it one day, the other person says, "No, we got to have one," so that we have one every week. And so you know, it's right. sort of like it, it. It it seems like it would be impossible by yourself, and especially because uh, the tech stuff, we have no idea. So he does everything. Right. I had to learn all. The, I had to learn how to do RSS feeds and all the yeah. shit. Ugh. Yeah. No, we c- couldn't. 
Um, but I laid the groundwork for yes. you guys. So let's get into your day. Uh, we always uh, talk to the guest about what a tip or what uh, about a specific day or a typical day in their life. I want to talk because you. Well, we mentioned you write for the Daily Show, mm-hmm. and you recently wrote for Hassan Minaj when he hosted the White House Correspondents yes, Dinner, which yes. was a big success. Big, su- I would huge say success. It was a huge hit critically acclaimed and he nailed it and i think obviously the writing the jokes were uh were uh lauded as well yes and uh i just thought it'd be interesting if you sort of took us through the day of what that was like when you were the right white house correspondence center yeah. so okay so for the week, two weeks leading up to it mm-hmm. we were at the comedy cellar like he was every night i would go you know four times a week maybe yeah Going through all these bits and stuff and this and that. So it was Doing a lot them in of front prep. of an audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. And would he explain that they were for the dinner? Yeah, yeah. And he would act it out and he'd, and he'd be like, just, you know, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to try this. Let's pretend. And then he'd wa- reintroduce himself and come yeah. up and do it. And it went, it went fine. It would, and it, that was helpful and all that stuff. So you learn how to uh, not just n- learn what jokes work, but like learn the material yourself. I think it, it helped him a lot to be kind of on off book you know mm-hmm. like if you watch the thing back he's not really reading anything he just knows all the jokes yeah. already so a lot of prep and then the thing was on saturday i guess mm-hmm. yeah so i go down to oh it was really annoying actually i went <laughs> to um i had a thing scheduled where i'm opening for dave coulier at roger williams in rhode island uh-huh. on friday night yeah so I'm going. I had to go up to Roger Williams on Friday night, and the oh, oh the whole so the White House Correspondents Dinner is a black tie event. Yes, and I knew that, and I've always known that, but I didn't like really that didn't click with me until like that week where it's like oh I need a tuxedo and yeah. the tuxedo shoes and all that bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So I'm you know it's hard <laughs> to do any of this, and I'm like where do I get a tuxedo? Your your tuxedo options are like there's a fifty dollar one, and then there's a five thousand dollar one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like I don't know. It, 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 surely there's something here. And then I'm trying to find. So I found this thing, but then I needed it altered, so I had to go drop the pants off. Friday after work, drop the pants off to get them hemmed. Then I had to run to Metro North Grand Central to go to Roger Williams with yeah. Dave Coulier. By the way, mathematically, what are the chances that you would have two b- events like this in two separate cities on a Friday and Saturday? Would this be common? I it's cra- it it's just, when it rains it pours. Yeah, like right exactly. now, that's I'm what so I'm, busy. That's what I'm getting at, and it's so hard. Like I, I was late to this thing, and all, no and worries. I have another thing right after this. Fine. But honest to God, eighty percent of my time, I'm sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. But when there's things, it's like yeah. I only ever have scheduled conflicts. There's never just like, oh, here's <laughs> yeah. a thing I can put on and the that, yeah. calendar. Yeah. So anyway, I'm like, I got a guy, Roger Williams. And I kind of like, you know, Dave Coulier, when I was a kid, you know. I Cut it out. Yeah, I want to hang out with him, but I can't because then I have to get on a train. Immediately. Yeah, because the show's at like eight or something. Mm-hmm. Was he wearing a Red Wings jersey? No. <laughs> it's a full house joke Matt doesn't get. Yeah, I've never seen the show. Oh, that's too bad. So anyway, he's he does his thing. I, I do my thing. He's late or something, so the show's a little, we, we hold it. You know, anyway, whatever. I got to get on a train back to New York. I should have fl- just flown out of Providence, but I couldn't because I had the fucking pants in New York. Go get the wow. pants. So I had to come back to New York at 10 p.m. I had to get on the train, so that takes like three hours on this Amtrak mm-hmm. to um, come back here. I'm back here early, you know, late, late, late. Then I got to get up and go get these pants because I have a train to D.C. at like 11 a.m. Yeah. So it's like just pants. Everything is like yeah. always like yeah. constant. I'm like sweating. It's like the hottest day of the year to yeah. that point where I'm like I have to run through the Times Square to go get the, my pants. Anyway, I figure like I'll, I get all this stuff. Oh, then I had to buy a shirt. And the only place. Uh, Tuck shirts is a big scam. Total, so the only place I could I even had one in stock was Macy's and it was four hundred dollars. I know. Ugh. And I was like, this isn't real. And then so I <laughs> bought I bought it, but I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So I t- I took that I took it all to DC. I get to DC, shared a cab with some high powered businesswoman um who was there for the dinner also. I go to the Hilton. We have some time to kill so I I look up Jaws A Bank, which is down the block, so I run down there. Again, I'm like sweating I'm just always like running yeah, running around always. midday it, hot sun. Uh huh. They had a shirt for forty dollars. Yeah. So I grabbed that shirt and I'm like, now I can return the Macy's yeah. four hundred dollars yeah. shirt. 
So I did that. I did that little swap, and that was kind of a victory. Quick aside, you'll love this. Sorry, because this is totally related, and it relates back to what we were talking about. One time, I went to a wedding in Philadelphia, and forty five. Oh, I know this. Forty five minutes before the wedding, and I, I, I had to be at the wedding. Yeah. I realized I had forgotten to pack my tuxedo shirt. I called the front desk. They called this place called the Shirt Store. Yeah. And. I was like, I need a tuxedo shirt right now. I gave them my size, and they were like, we don't deliver. I was like, come have a guy bring it to me. I said, I'll make it worth your while. I've never said those words <laughs> yeah, before. Yeah. The guy brought me, this shirt was 20 bucks. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And I was, so, and this is like premium service. I handed the guy 40 bucks. I gave him a 100% tip because yeah. I was wow. like, you, I was like, that is, that, you know, that's the, I mean, in that tuxedo situation. Tuxedo shirts. I would have tipped yeah. him more than that, but that's a good wow. story. <laughs> oh, my God. They make it me bad, but okay, go ahead. So you found a, so you found a shirt at Joseph A. Bank. Yeah, and then uh, you bought a tux for this event. Though. I did. Okay, I mean, I'm did kind it have of, buttons I'm, I'm or you needed studs? Yeah, I have those. You have. Those. They say if you wear it three times, it pays for itself. Yeah, because I rented a tuxedo once when I was nominated for an Emmy. Oh. You all remember that? You, you, everyone listening, home remembers that? And it was like 150 bucks. Yeah, and the tuxedo I bought it was like 500. Yeah, so it's like. Just can't get. I, ha- I wear it for this thing, and then I have, yeah, three, yeah, three times. Yeah, wedding, sure. A black tie wedding is crazy. You need the fuckcito, which is the <laughs> stucky and Murray, the Murray, Murray one that you just rip. Our off. Our friends yeah. invented a zip up, pull off, full configured tuxedo. Tuxedo called the fuckcito. F U X E D O. Check it out. Joint. Anyway, continue. <laughs> um, so you get, so you're okay. So you you get there. I got all that sorted, and then, you know, the dinner thing happens. So that, wait, sorry, but the day of, he's got the set nail. So you're yeah, not, we like, already sitting around, everything. like, trying to come up with new bits based no, on the news. No, 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 like no. Nothing had really changed. Yeah. Um, the only thing we were kind of keeping an eye on was who would show up to see if we needed to, like, oh, whatever's here, we need to do a joke on yeah. it. Or but nobody showed so-and-so's up. So-and-so's not here. <laughs> Cut that joke. Right. Is yeah, there but, a bunch of people your pat this material has to go through? No, nobody. Wow. Because there's no, there's no approval thing. Mm-hmm. Well, the president wasn't there, so I'm guessing that cut out a whole bunch of... I don't think even they would be in yeah. that. There's no yeah. chain of it, because it's like, the whole thing is free speech. You just do your... Yeah. yeah. So anyway, anyway so the, the dinner happens, I think it's like seven, you go down. There's like a red carpet, but it's for the, it's a right. status thing. You yeah. know how, did you go to the Emmys? Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I wrote for the Emmy, so I've never been nominated for an Emmy, but I went there as a writer. So very similar to you in yeah. this situation where I was like in a tux, but like backstage, like right. not, you know. Do you remember though, they'd have a red carpet and then there was just like the everybody else. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Yeah. So it was like that with the thing. So there's, here's the, yeah. you know, Anderson or not, he wasn't there, but like, yeah, those types of people. Anyway, I have nothing but contempt for these people. I find every one of them. I really do believe yeah. in fake news. I think they're all total frauds and yeah. hucksters and con men, and it's all bullshit. Right. I think CNN is garbage, and everyone knows Fox News is fake, but when you apply that to CNN, for some reason, people go into hysterics, yeah. and they're total trash. Yeah. So anyway, I have no respect for any of these people, and most of the stuff that I wrote for the Correspondence Center was about MSNBC and CNN. Mm-hmm. Which was a nice cathartic relief yeah. that we, we got to do those kind of things. Sure. Um, so, you know, there's some hobnobbing. I'm walking around like Madeline Albright walks by me and like that, you know, I don't like her either. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's no one that I'm, I'm not seeking anyone out because yeah. I, I really don't like any of these people. Yeah. So I'm just hanging out. But Fareed I Zakaria. Yeah. Is that the next urinal? Yeah, how does he? What does it take to be discredited as a journalist? <laughs> yeah, Fareed Zakaria. Remember, big plagiarism scandal. Yeah, sure. Somehow, like, doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So anyway, all these people are fucking con men, and yeah. then uh, you know the dinner, and it's just bullshit. They're just jacking each other off. Yeah. The, the thing is, they can conf- they can. Conf- there's a difference between the press and free speech, and then these corporate companies yeah that that you know um report news you know in, a, in mm-hmm. some bullshit fashion so when with w- an attack on them an attack on cnn is not an attack on the first amendment sure but they like can't understand that 
Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of like flag waving and bullshit and all this stuff. Anyway, I hate them. I can't say it. So I'm just sitting there eating the yeah. food, doing that. Hassan goes up. He does very well, and he gets a standing ovation. Yeah. Which is, according to the woman who runs the thing, the first time she's yeah. ever seen that in 25 years. Of wow. Doing that. And he gets a standing ovation for basically going after the people that are that you hate, that are there. I yeah, mean, the he's whole real, thing he, is run yeah. by the people in the audience. I mean, they, they, yeah. they have to give him credit at least for inviting someone to come and basically roast the shit out of them. Well, they thought he he would roast Trump. Yeah. Well, he, and he t- did. He talked yeah. about they. They asked him not to, and he said, "Right, I don't know. I, I don't know what that any of that business was, but yeah, I mean, they they certainly weren't like a good crowd. Like as much as they want to, everyone wants to be like Trump can't no, take it's a joke. A, and that's they why asked it's not him here. not to because yeah. in, in proxy, but he he was like, yeah. I have to. Yeah, it's a notoriously tough crowd in any year. It's just because they're humorless. Yeah. See, they're all like little Trumps, right? You know. Yeah. They they're like Trump won't be here because he can't take a joke. And it's yeah. like as soon as you start like talking about them, they, with his yeah, arms crossed, yeah. they are the most petty. Yeah, yeah. they these people are garbage people. Yeah. They're garbage people. And so I like the Chris Matthews though. No, he's awful. <laughs> he's truly awful. There, they're all bad. There are a few. There's not one good. Person. Well, I mean the. I mean, we could. This is a whole other topic that we could talk about for hours. But there is no one anymore who just gets on TV and gives it, tells you the news. That the, it all it's all mixed with opinion. It's all it's editorialized. All, yeah. It's all nonsense. Yeah, and it's it really comes down to it's just propaganda. They're all trying to manipulate in different ways, and none of them are being straightforward. So anyway, I don't like it. I think it's trash. They're kind of celebrating themselves in a, in a masturbatory way. Made some jokes at their expense, and then I don't remember. Oh, there were some after parties, but they were really lame. Mm-hmm. Um, like BuzzFeed had one, and I went, and I was just like, I gotta go to sleep because then I had a train again. I had to get on the train. At you like were 9 op- opening for Saget the next. Day. <laughs> yeah. I, no. I don't know why I had to come back. He I was, was playing so drums for the Beach yeah. Boys with John Stamos. Yeah. <laughs> I did it all because I was trying to save money on the train, and then right. and then Hassan reimbursed the train tickets, so I, I should have <laughs> just. Yeah, got a better train, but yeah. I was like, I'm in such a like. Was there afterwards? Was were you guys like on a high? Like, did you toast and sort of? Like, oh yeah, we were we were very happy. And, and yeah. look, I'm 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 kind of odd man out at the Daily Show. Like, I'm not a liberal. Like, whatever yeah. this and that. Um, and we go after Trump a lot, and we did it at the White House Correspondence Center and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's like you know, comedically or, or or just as a performance, the thing went off perfectly. It was awesome. Yeah. So. You got to be happy about that. Yeah. And it's, I don't get hung up on the ideology and all that stuff. And it was just a good, we did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. And he did a good job. What's uh, the food? What's served? Um, Salmon plate? It was a surf and turf. Oh. So you got one of, you got both. I think they gave an option for vegetarian. And I thought it was okay. People were complaining about it, but. I, I, yeah, people were complaining about the food. There's 2,000 people in this room. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry that your filet mignon isn't Isn't like exactly how Gordon Ramsay would prepare it for one person. They have to have this, there's just a giant oven in the back. Like, how how can you prepare all this? Yeah, it's And come out at once. I'm like, this is amazing. They did a great job. Yeah. Has anyone made the joke? Uh, I'm sorry if I just if I just came up with this, uh, or if I'm still. Has anyone made the joke that uh, as uh, with climate change, uh, uh, surf and turf will be surf and surf? No. Is that funny? Tweet it. I'll tweet. I might. Yeah. Look out for that tweet, bad. listeners. I just thought. I don't know why it made me. I think. I, but anyway, sorry. Yeah. Um, so you take the train back. Do you return the shirt in Manhattan? Oh, good. Or yeah. Did you yeah. return How the shirt in a Macy's in DC? No, and I could have returned it to, it was a Hugo Boss shirt from Macy's. Hey. I could have given it to the Hugo Boss right by my house, but I didn't know. Mm. So I go to Macy's, and I was a little like, I hope it's not the same sales guy. Yeah. I don't want him well, to see so me. There are so many in the Macy's. Uh, oh, there, I think that's built in the idea that, like, you know, people return stuff there all the time. The fact that you returned it without actually wearing it puts you in the the top the top percentage of the returns. top one because there's a lot right. of people who would wear that once and leave the tags on and return it. Oh, I, and the so amount you of, can tell it gets gross. The amount of things I've tell. worn and returned. The fact that you didn't wear it, that you returned it unworn, yeah. is actually uh, I'm a hero. Yeah, you're a hero in this situation. Yeah, um, I come from a family of expert returners. Well, that's <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome. Congratulations on the uh, uh, on the event. It was a great job. 
Is there anything that's hooking up at the uh, Oil House Correspondents Dinner? A little CNN, MSNBC, I Joe mean, and Mika? You know, people say situation. that, but I don't... Just a question. I don't think there is. I'm curious. A lot of hot correspondents walking around. Um, we wanted to ask you about the... Uh, not hot journal. Yeah, Chris Matthews. Uh, There's no. some on NBC. Um, MSNBC. Uh, do you ever blow people off? Do you have a go-to blow-off? Have you blown anyone off recently? How do you blow people off? I mean, I blew you up on this podcast, like, last week, right? Mm, not until... Kind of. It, it was a few days before. It I was didn't within, text you back. I don't, I don't blame it you. It was within the yeah. appropriate range. I was trying We to... had one guest, we won't say who, although we, he knows who he is, who just didn't show up. Yeah, that's awful. Yeah. I never do that. I'm not like that, but mm-hmm. I will cancel on things. Like, I'm supposed to be somewhere right now. Is that an hour behind? That, I'm supposed yes. to be somewhere. So I'm yeah. blowing off a thing right now. Yeah. And I'm sorry. What are you going to tell those people? I'm going to say I'm sorry. It was bad traffic, whatever. I actually don't know how I'm going to get I should get an Uber right now. <laughs> we're, we're witnessing a blow-off. We're off. witnessing Hold a, on. Let me see if well, there's an email from them. There's a blow-off. But this is a real-time blow-off. This is great. This, this is the first on the one. podcast. Well, yeah. Yeah, i got to get an Uber. Okay. Well, while you do that... Thank you, David yes. Angelo. Where can people find you? Oh, my God. Um, Do you even want people to find you? It sounds like you might not even want people to find you. I am... Um, Twitter? Twitter, Mr. David Angelo. Yeah, got it. Uh, although I haven't tweeted in like two weeks. Hmm. I'm, I'm really getting... It's toxic environment. You're, gonna, you're an Instagrammer, though. You Instagram. Oh, rarely. Mr. David Angelo on Instagram. Watch The Daily Show. Sure. And then do you have any nights. gigs? Any, anything coming up? You want to promote anything else? No, I I occasionally open on the road for John Mulaney, and in in July, if you're in the Midwest, if you're like North Carolina, Virginia, or something, I'm I'll be with him. Um, and do you have a Comedy Central series, a web series? Nothing's easy on ComedyCentral.com, although it it was discontinued. But there's six episodes. People can check it out. They're great. The yeah, great episodes. It yeah. should have been a show. Who treats you better, Mulaney or Coulier? Oh, Mulaney. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But not that Coulier's bad. We, we just don't. He's he's just busy with his props. We oh. didn't interact. Mulaney puts me in the hotel sure. with him. We're at the fucking Ritz. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. He's I just to wanted that. to talk about David Coulier. Well, anyway, we uh, we have to get Alex out of here, but thank you. Yeah. Thank and, you, and, guys. And David. He's already he's the first person ever to call an Uber during the podcast. Well, Very you sad. guys, re- it's just that I've been so busy <laughs> it's nice to be able to squeeze of you to uh, squeeze this in so thank you very much and thank you to all the listeners and, and our sponsor you. samsung yes when they call stay busy <laughs> your new sponsor stay, stay busy, stay busy everybody because i'm busy whenever i get with her say i'm busy and i'm gonna hit you later because i'm busy busy with her